and we kind of do some similar things. Um, basically, my unit focuses on every street level narcotics area that's a high crime, high drug area. We get a lot of these tips from officers uh, working in their areas. We get tips from, uh, and of course, citizens like you guys. What we do, we have a 16 officer unit. We have two detectives and two sergeants. And we focus on these areas by working the tips, by being an undercover officer, um, being in plain clothes, being able to observe uh, like drug transactions or things of that sort, and uh, making uh, interactions with these people. Um, last year alone, uh, my unit was a new unit that was formed in APD in organized crime, and we had over 370 arrests last year. Uh, and those were new delivery cases or new possession cases that were all felonies. Now to put that in perspective, there's 365 days a year. We work four out of seven days a year, or four, four out of seven days a week. So you can imagine uh, the hard work that we've been doing. This year alone, we've, uh, we're over, I think, 230 arrests for the year, and that's with being tasked with other things. Um, How many different individuals would that, out of the 230? Uh -huh. Is that like 50 bad guys, or is it, I mean, it's not 230 no, those different are, guys. Those, those are 230 different guys. Those are 230 new arrests. So no repeats in there? Uh, new repeats, yeah, well, we do get some repeat offenders from last year, or new repeats. Like, we've had interactions with people that, that we bought drugs from as, as early as two days before. Sure. And that same person is, is out there selling again. So, um, so that can happen. So a lot of those can be repeats. Um, most of them are not, though. So... Uh, like I said, we focus in every, everywhere throughout the city. Um, now, MedTech, with their help, is we work very closely with them, Associate Sergeant Dixon's unit. Uh, last year, I know, uh, what is it, the Fourth and Sabine area. I don't know if anybody was familiar with that downtown, but that was a very high crime, high drug area. And in conjunction with his team last year, that, that place is completely cleaned up. Um, 100 block of Chalmers, you guys are, are, are uh, if you know about that area, that's close to Cesar Chavez and Chalmers Avenue. Big area for uh, heroin, just because it's so close to the, uh, to the uh, methadone clinic. And mm -hmm. that area right now has no one out there hanging out for heroin. Now, not saying that it's completely cleaned up. A lot of these things, a lot of this, these areas tend to, or the dealers tend to move, the users tend to move to different areas. So we have to be aware and kind of follow those things also and those trends. Um, so... Basically, I mean, that's what my unit does. We work close with the officers on the street, of course, the citizens. Uh, Commander Reyes was talking about the app and, and being anonymous as, as far as tips go. So those tips go up to the what we call the intelligence unit here. And depending on what kind of tip it is, if it's a drug tip, most likely if it's a drug tip, it's going to come down to us or somebody else in the organized crime division. So that's how we work those tips in those areas. Does anybody have any questions? Can you talk a little bit about the prosecution of the K2 case? Sure. And, like, some of the difficulties or whatever so, we have. Last week, uh, with the Metro Attack unit, we were, we were downtown doing a, a joint operation. And the day before the whole big K2 no epidemic that happened downtown, <laughs> where I think over 60 people went to, went to uh, the hospital, something like that, somewhere around those numbers, um, we had eight arrests for new delivery cases. That was just the day before. Now, as far as prosecution, uh, K2 is something that's new as far as being illegal in the state of Texas. Um, from what we're doing now, we haven't had a lot of, to be honest, we haven't gone out there and targeted K2 as much as we have the, the drugs like heroin, you know, the drugs like the felony drugs that are out there like heroin, uh, crack cocaine, methamphetamines that are just prevalent everywhere. Now, K2 seems to be focused downtown mainly, around the Arch area. Uh, we are going to start going out there and, and arresting people for them. But the problem with K2 is that right now the law says that it's like a Class B misdemeanor. If I was to arrest, it's like having marijuana, basically. If I was to arrest, arrest somebody for, for K2 and having it on, it's a Class B misdemeanor um, for possession. However, that has to go to the lab, and the lab has to... Um, test what's in that K2 or in that, in that product to say whether it's illegal or not. So we may have to wait and actually, uh, we may not be able to make the arrest right there, so we may have to wait till it comes back and then follow a warrant on those people. Now, we can also do delivery 
uh, which is the best way, send an undercover out there, get a, de get a delivery charge on people. That's what's going to be the felony charge for these K2, and that's what we're going to start doing down there in conjunction with the uh, Metro TAC unit. It's, it's, Are you fine? It's a stupid question, but this K2, because I keep hearing about is it a pill? Is it a powder? It's, it's like potpourri, basically. And it's so, not a drug, it's a toxin. That's what we've been telling everybody. This is not a drug. This is a toxin that you're putting in your body. You don't know. It's coming from unregulated labs in China. Well, well how do people take it? They, they smoke it. Yeah, but that's, that's like the, marijuana. They yeah. roll it up. They spray it on tobacco and blunts, and uh, they're self-medicating individuals that have been let loose by the system. We can't police this problem. We need to MHMR and get those people back in beds. And Rick Perry cut the funding, I believe, last week. I was assaulted by a man, and I was told by another homeless man that they just took out two dozen people out of beds in MHMR, and that's what we... So a lot of these people have been kicked right off, the, straight off their meds, and they don't have any medication. I don't think we can win that war. I'm not sure about all the, the numbers or the people that are being kicked out. Me neither. Um, so I can't give you an answer on that, but um, I do know that it's, it's a big problem downtown yeah. right now. It is con considered a controlled substance, though? It is. Just a different schedule. Schedule two right now. I think he hit on the big thing is we need to change the message. Instead of don't do it because it's a drug. A lot of people are you know, they're familiar with the war on drugs and they're like, oh the cops just don't want us getting high and change it to like he said, it's a public health issue and get the word out there that this is an unknown poison or unknown toxin because we have no idea what these people have mixed with this potpourri or whatever. So if we can kind of start getting that message out there in our community outreach groups or church groups and whatever, change it. Don't do it because it's a drug. Don't do it because it's an <coughs> unknown poison. It's a toxin. And EMS and the uh, city health services are going to start pushing that message out also from their side. So it's not just us. <coughs> I know we're just about out of time, but I did want to bring up one one last topic. It's uh, something we've really been working hard on for a while. It's called the host brought it up at other commanders' forums, but you know it's out there now. Uh, June first, we kicked it off. Uh, this is a homelessness outreach street team. Basically, it's modeled after, somewhat modeled after the Houston team. We we saw a presentation. Uh, it's been a, quite a while back, over a year ago, about this team that teamed up with a an officer, an outreach counselor, and a paramedic, and uh, they would go out to homeless camps and, and interact with the homeless population. You know, it's a way to, to reach out to the homeless and not wait for them to come seeking services. We can actually get out there and, and uh, the, the team, again, has, a, has an outreach counselor. They can refer people to different, different things. They can, uh, you know, uh, the, the paramedic on the team uh, can do, you know, some uh, triage of patients and, and contact the street medicine team and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of benefits uh, because you know the homeless problem we can't arrest our way out of it we can't keep arresting people packing them in the paddy wagon and they go to jail and they're out by the time you get the next paddy wagon up there uh, for one it's just not right arresting people just because they're poor we, that doesn't mean that we aren't going to have enforcement on the criminal element that's preying upon them and everybody else in the downtown area. So that's what our focus has shifted to. We have the host team up and running. Uh, city Council, uh, I think, is going to agree to let it go another year as it is. We, we started out thinking, we'll start it in June. By September, we'll know we need a bunch more teams just spread out everywhere in the city. Well, it's turned out that they've identified so many gaps in the system. The host team is like a little gate. So they can go out, they can find somebody, but then they refer them to different places. Well, if you don't have those systems behind you, you up, and all you do is go out there and say, well, you know, what do you need? And they tell you, and you say, all right, well, here's your number. We'll get back to you in a year. Well, you haven't really solved anything. So uh, they've made a lot of contacts, a lot of, a lot of different uh, connections, so that we've gotten some uh, priority service on some people, and we've, we've been able to uh, identify those that have been uh, selected for homes, and they don't know where they're at. Echo can't find them, so they'll tell the host team, and they'll be out there, and they'll find them for them. And uh, you know, so it's it's a real positive thing that we're trying to do. The officers roll. Good Friday, August 29th. Nice.
sorry, still Monday, August 29th. Feels like Friday. We have a whole circle of cops up there. That's a lot of something happening all the way, like, that's a whole... Massive, massive case of jaywalking. Oh, no. Was it a fatal jaywalking case? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, no, it's not funny, but like in a Darwin Award, kind of like dark humor. Oh, wow. Somebody's here. A lot of gunfire, a lot of gun power. Somebody's here. There's too many crops in this town. Yeah. You know how much the annual budget is? I know. I mean, you look, you look, at, look, at, the, look, at, the, look at the amount of resources here. Take a guess. What's the annual budget APD? I'd say 20 million. I'm sorry, it's 374 million dollars. How much? Not 374 million a year, and they want, of course, to increase it. They just got uh, 12 million for their taser contract to store their body cams that they'll never let us see. And that's not including the, the court system, the municipal court system at all. That's just APD. But they don't have money for kids' education or your road or. You know what it costs to run a helicopter? A lot, probably. Well, a million dollars a year. Yeah, they got like three of them. They got two of them. Yeah, and the sheriff's got like one, so that's like, they got a lot. So we're here, there's a EMS here, EMS here. Fire truck number one here, engine one, man. Engine one's here. Flight number one. 4506 is here. These guys. Bald Eagles over there. There guys, can get a couple of them. Three of them. Well that's an Indian EMS. So there's three EMS of fire. Fire's first responder. The second responders are the EMS. The EMS gets the job done, stabilizes to get them to uh, the ER. But uh, I got a feeling they're going to tell me that this is uh, K2 related. Even if it's medical, even if the medical is just the root cause or psychiatric is the root cause, they're going to tell me it's K2 related. Because they don't have a very deep view of the situation, nor do they have a solution other than, uh, you know, force of control. What we got there? With the corporal.
So we're here downtown at the Arch. Bella Rolls at the Homeless Center. Yes, thank you for doing this. I appreciate this. My name is Monica Murray Hernandez Ariano. I would like to press charges against this police officer and this police officer. Uh, contact my attorney. His name is Bob Smith, Robert Smith. My mom's name is Minerva Hernandez, 696 2870. I'd like to press charges against these two individuals. If you could please make sure to get their faces. Um, I don't trust them and I believe that they're going to try and hold me against my will. I'll do my best, ma'am. Uh, there's no female I'm not in the way. I didn't say you were. I said thank you for not. I was agreeing with you. You're not CL. There's a metal bar. So this is how we take care of the homeless in the morning. The homeless get rousted. At night, they get rousted. If any kind of event comes to town, they get rousted. So normally, this is a sleeping area uh, where people sit and wait for the lottery to go into the arch. But you can't go into the arch because there's too many people homeless and this rich city can't afford any bed. But it's the only reason we have homeless is because of greed. Watch. Putting the belt on her, they slammed her down on the table. Picked her up off the ground. We're gonna put the belt on her and see what they do after that. She's probably gonna take her to the paddy wagon. No, you fucking come. Tweaking up on her even more. This is what happens in the Caritas. This is the Caritas soup kitchen. I don't even have any words for this. Yeah. Got three cops on one woman. They're putting something around her head. Uh, they're putting a, uh, the sock on her head right now. That whatever you call it. Keep from spitting and shit. Yeah, but her face is on the ground. I don't know how she could spit, so it's just a retaliation. There's my friend I saw today. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> I'm not good for that lady. She's getting beat up right now. They got a woman, they dragged her down the street. I saw it. I yeah, saw she's it in there, they're beating her up now. In the Caritas. What do you think of the like, soup kitchen being used to beat up people? Is that cool for the homeless soup kitchen that has a nonprofit foundation to be? I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Hey, can you lower your head, please? Can you lower your head, we're gonna slam it up in there. One cop's in there, two cops is in there. Three, two, all right. Three cops. My first time being all this and all. Anyway, I was asleep and he kicked me in the head with the dog. Last night? Did you have to go to the hospital? I just came back from the Breckenridge. Breckenridge, that's terrible. Uh, broke my shoulder. Same day, car stolen, broke my shoulder, unconscious, major concussion. I had to walk around for two weeks holding up my head for my head. And I stayed at Austin Community Park. I didn't eat much, I lost 30 pounds. Oh, tell me about what happened today at the 7 Eleven. Well, I got a bracket ridge. With your broken jaw? Yeah. Yeah. No, I have to go back on the 18th to get a surgery. Oh, man. And um, I got a broken shoulder that's falling down behind my pipe. Yeah. And then I'm going to bring that up. Just be a wrestler or something. I don't know about broken bones. Broke my uh, collarbone twice. Anyway, um, I can show you the paperwork if you want. No, I believe you. Why wouldn't I believe you? So, what were you doing at 7-Eleven? Drinking. I went there and um, I got lost because there's a lot of construction. Uh -huh. I didn't know which way to go downtown. I still don't. You know, to get back to the 
7th Street, uh, the Arch. So you're at the 7-Eleven drinking, self-medicating? Yeah. Do you have painkillers? Well, they gave me a uh, prescription for Tramacol or... But you don't have the money to get it? Well, I can get it, but I have to go to the pharmacy and whatever. It's a big pain. In the meantime, you were self-medicating with alcohol, like it's always been, right? Oh, yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah, yeah so, um, so you're taking care of your pain with alcohol, and then what happened? Well, how did the police end up over there, or what happened? I don't know. Well, actually, I do. Um, I went to college, and I worked in Silicon Valley. I'm not stupid. Yeah. Anyway, you know, I, I've only been homeless the first time in my life. Anyway, I'm backwards. Anyway, I found a little corridor I could lay down and be left alone. Uh-huh. That's just what we left alone. Yeah. Human dignity and all. Yes. Good way. Good way of statement. Anyway, I couldn't believe the fucking cops were right there. But Mr. White was like, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm the right fucking way, you know? They knew your name? Yeah. Anyway. Did they give their names? Anyway, they said four people had called, worried about me. I was feeling some of them. Like saw, medical. They were worried about you medically, right? Like, I don't know. Something could be wrong with you. Right. Yeah. And so, what was their response to your medical issues? Did they uh, help you? Did they get EMS for you? Did they offer any aid? No, I just came from the hospital at the large one. So. No, I was just laying there, you know? Uh huh. Uh, Resting. Yeah, it wasn't very comfortable. Like, yeah, it's hot. Shit. No, I thought. Have you ever found some comfortable cement without a blanket? No. I haven't. And I'm 55. There ain't no comfortable cement. Is that comfortable? Lay down on the go for it. Yeah. yeah. Where my jaw's all fucked up. And, uh... So, I saw them pointing down the street, like telling you to leave. Yeah, they asked me to get up and go. Did they offer any medical aid? Well, they knew I just, you know, I was at Brackenridge. Um, I don't know, yeah, if you're in the good. hospital, that doesn't mean you don't need more medical aid. I don't feel good. I know. I can't eat. I'm sorry. I feel a heartbeat in my jaw. Huh? You hard feel hard beating your jaws pain. If you can get some eyesight and it might help. Where? Hey, it's strange for a while. Yeah. It's, it's a soup kitchen. Hey, it's supposed to be a soup kitchen. Yeah. And what is it tonight? It's a jail. A jail, yeah. Bad stuff. Watch out for the cars, buddy. It's messed up. Yeah, it's messed up. I'll do my best on that one, alright? Hey, you have a good night. You too, man. female officers yet. Here comes the belt. She's such a large, powerful person, you know. Call you in a second. No, 
what I mean? Yep. We need four cops and a belt to subdue to someone that's basically passed out from pain. Uh, police officers? They got a that's female. They're going to put a belt on a female. They're filming the substation. What's going on? The cops arrested her, dragged her down the street a little bit. She collapsed. Oh, they use this like a black site, like the one in Chicago where people Fifty dollars a day is what they, the police department pays care of. Yeah, I got a copy of the This isn't an official substation, they just use it. Yeah. I did an information request and got so it. So what kind of group y'all are? Peaceful Streets. And he's independent, but he's a friend of ours. I film with the Challenger newspaper. It's a street newspaper. I'm glad we got somebody here doing it and showing them what they really not. They got a girl in there. They're going to put a belt on her. She's already collapsed. There's four cops in there. No female officer. They don't want to be there. You know they have a female in there. Are they driving her? They don't want to have it. And it's 6'9". And the officer in there, they call him 6'9". The big tall white guy, they call him 6'9". Yeah, because what he did to me, you know, he pulled me in my home while we just like two days ago. And then now he putting rooms around the street. But I'll tell you something, like y'all doing, they're crooked. You motherfuckers crooked. I also got some crooked now. I was in Nilby. Who are some of the worst cops by name? That's one right there. The tall guy. He's the worst motherfucker. The they, got, they got one named Blake. Blake. Also Blake. Okay. He's the one, he's the one, like he, he, he's the, he's the coldest one. Like he take him up to the jail just sitting on the sidewalk. It's just sitting, instead of writing you a ticket and giving you a warning, he just took, he took like six of you jail yesterday just sitting on the sidewalk. It's not against the law to sit on the sidewalk because it's hot outside. Yeah, uh oh, she's gonna fall out of the chair. Uh oh. oh she fell out of the chair. <laughs> no. We're at the arch here, as you can see, and the police are doing an exercise, and we're going to film for the people. Walk back this way, keep your hands where we can see them. Walk back this way, keep your hands where we can see them. He's got a cane. Super great. Welcome to Austin. Oh, they got them all tied. This is the Austin Police Department. Is there any other member of people in the car? He's about to kill some homeless person. Super great. Thanks, guys. Make you seem happy. Why are they trying to shoot somebody? They're finna shoot somebody. Better not shoot nobody because you'll be on film. Namaste, y'all. Be safe. Film the police.